In this video, we'll walk through the functions of all of the colored wires on the Pioneer installation wire harness system for the 2014, 2015, and 2016 model year in-dash receivers with video screens. Let's start with the yellow wire. This one is responsible for the in-dash receiver's memory functions, like the clock, the radio station presets, and audio settings. So if your radio station presets and clock reset each time you turn off your vehicle, the yellow wire may have an incorrect connection to the vehicle. The yellow wire needs to see constant power from the vehicle. So if your vehicle has a key, remove the key from the ignition. If your vehicle has an on-off switch, be sure to switch it to the off position and now measure the voltage on the yellow wire. The yellow wire should measure 12 volts regardless of the position of the vehicle's ignition or its on-off switch. Next up is the red wire. The red wire needs to be controlled by the vehicle's ignition or its on-off switch. Only when the vehicle is switched on should the red wire measure 12 volts. Here is the orange wire with a white stripe. This wire can be used to automatically dim the illumination on the in-dash receiver when the vehicle's headlights are switched on. Now not every vehicle will have a connection for the orange wire with the white stripe. And additionally, some drivers may choose to drive with their headlights on at all times, day and night. And the driver may not want the in-dash receiver's illumination to dim during the daytime hours. So to solve these issues, many Pioneer in-dash receivers also have an illumination timer that can dim the illumination automatically based on the time of day. For more information on the illumination timer, be sure to check out the dimmer settings video with the link in the description below. If you don't use this wire, be sure to properly terminate the end of the wire so it will not come in contact with other wires or metal in the vehicle. The black wire is the ground wire. Metal in the body or frame of the vehicle is often a good choice for the ground wire. Be sure to note, the in-dash receiver will not operate without a proper ground connection. Next up is the purple wire with the white stripe. This connection enables the in-dash receiver to determine if the vehicle is in its reverse gear or not. Now, this is commonly used to automatically switch on and off an optional backup camera. One possible connection for this wire is to the backup lamp terminal that sees a change in voltage when the vehicle is switched into its reverse gear. In most vehicles, the in-dash receiver will use a 12 volt positive feed to switch the camera on. This can be changed to a ground feed if it's required by a particular installation. For more information about setting up the optional backup camera, be sure to check out the camera settings video in the description below. Not every installation will use this wire, so if you don't use this wire, be sure to properly terminate the end of the wire so it won't come in contact with other wires or metal in the vehicle. The yellow wire with a black stripe can be used to allow external systems to mute the in-dash receiver. A temporary ground signal sent by the external device or through a third-party adapter can temporarily mute the music from the in-dash receiver. One example of this would be an in-vehicle communication system that needs to mute the music from the in-dash receiver so a command can be heard by the driver. Now not every installation will use this wire, and if you don't use this wire be sure to properly terminate the end of the wire so it won't come in contact with other wires or metal in the vehicle. Here is the blue wire with a white stripe or the system remote control wire and it's got nothing to do with the wireless remote control included with many in-dash receivers. The blue wire with the white stripe is critical for the operation of external amplifiers, power antennas, or any other device connected to the in-dash receiver that needs to switch on when the receiver is switched on. This wire is typically connected to amplifiers and other external devices either directly or through the use of a third-party relay. External devices connected through the system remote control wire will remain on when the receiver is powered on and even when the receiver's source has been switched off. The system remote control wire will shut down external devices when the receiver is switched to its off position and when the vehicle is switched to its off position. 
For more information about the source off setting and power off setting, be sure to check out the home screen video listed in the description below. And the system remote control wire is not used in every installation. If you don't use this wire, be sure to properly terminate the end of the wire so it won't come in contact with other wires or metal in the vehicle. Video can only be seen on the in-dash receiver screen with the parking brake engaged. The light green wire is for connection to the parking brake switch. In order to watch video on the in-dash receiver screen and perform selected other functions on the in-dash receiver, the parking brake has to be engaged in an on, off, on operation. If you find that certain buttons are grayed out on the in-dash receiver menu system, try to engage the parking brake. Many of these functions will then become available. The light green wire needs to be connected to the power supply side of the parking brake switch. If you choose to not connect this wire to the parking brake switch, the receiver's video functions will be disabled as well as selected other menu functions. And if you choose to not use this wire, be sure to properly terminate the end of the wire so it won't come in contact with other wires or metal in the vehicle. Finally, let's talk about the speaker leads on the wire harness. There are two operation modes for the speaker leads, standard mode and network mode. For more information about using standard mode and network mode, be sure to check out the video with the link in the description below for understanding standard mode two-way and network mode three-way setup. There are four pair of speaker leads in the wire harness. Each pair has a solid color wire for the positive side of the connection and the same color with a black stripe for the negative side of the connection. The first two are the white wire and the white wire with the black stripe. These are the connections for the left front speaker in standard mode or left high in network mode. The next two are the gray wire and gray with a black stripe. These are the connections for the right front speaker in standard mode and the right high in network mode. Next is the green wire and green with a black stripe. These are the connections for the left rear speaker in standard mode or left mid-range in network mode. And finally, the purple wire and purple with a black stripe. These are the connections for the right rear speaker in standard mode or right mid in network mode. Please note, normal speaker connections are designed to operate between 4 and 8 ohm impedance, and it is possible to set up the rear speaker output to operate a small subwoofer. For more information about setting up the rear speaker output to operate a subwoofer, be sure to check out the audio settings video in the description below. And if you are using external amplifiers and not using the speaker output wires, be sure to properly terminate the end of each wire so it will not contact other wires or metal in the vehicle. If you don't have a full understanding of the operation of each of these installation wires, I recommend taking your vehicle to a Pioneer Electronics authorized dealer for installation. To find a dealer in your area, follow the link below for where to buy. Then choose Car Visual Audio from the drop-down list on the left and click the Find It button.